Yo, you want to know it's crazy because, you know, obviously you come from the world of music, uh, radio promotion. I don't know if those tactics were were commonplace in fashion, but you definitely pulled the page right out of freaking. <laughs> let me tell you something. My wife. Records play. Yo, let me tell you something. My wife, we had a rule. We had a rule because she she knew the game. So she she and I had a rule that if I was on the road with an artist or if I was on the road, I could not go to a strip club with someone she didn't know and someone she didn't know their wife. So a lot of times I would take a DJ to a club and say, yo, I got to leave you here. Get some money, go have fun. Tell me if you need me to pick you up, you need a ride home, whatever. And that was it. I would just let them go. And they would go and do what they do and yada, yada, yada. Or I would call my wife and say, yo, Chantel, listen, I'm in North Carolina. I'm with blah, blah, blah. We're going into this and this and this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, it's cool. Go. Or nah, it's not cool. You ain't going nowhere. That's it. Yo, so so obviously Mark Echo went on to do huge things, blew up that company, moves on, he does his thing with Complex. Looking back in hindsight, they say you can always see a horse, a winner from the starting gate. Mm -hmm. We talked about Nas, we talked about Mark Echo, and I'm sure we talked about a bunch of other people in this conversation. But those are two you were around very early in their journey. Number one, could you see they got it? They, 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 this is this is they're not average. They are definitely going to the top of their industry. And number two, was it something about them? Is there a commonality? Is there, is there a thread that runs through both of them that only winners tend to have? Well, I mean, I could easily ping pong that back to you and, and ask you if that's what you saw about Puff when you first started working with him, right? That's real. Certain people, you just see it. It's just obvious. And I've been really fortunate from Russell and Lior and Chris Lighty, may he rest in peace, and Mark Echo, and even his sister Marcy, and even Raphael Jacoby and my team at Nouveau. Like, there's certain things that you notice about people that tend to not only see the world differently, but they simplify how it works. And the one commonality, the one common DNA that every executive I've ever been around that was truly successful, you know, I'm talking about with B's next to the name, you know, billionaires. They all are able to make very complex things very simple. You know, um, you know, take, take Rob Stone and John Cohen at the Fader and Cornerstone. I've known them guys since middle school basketball. I, I've, I've known Rob Stone and John since we all played middle school basketball league. It was obvious that Rob was and John were gonna be bigger than what they were at their record labels. It was just obvious. When I met Raphael Jacoby for the first time in Detroit and he was talking about Nouveau, after the success he had with Hypnotic, it was obvious I had to jump on and figure a way to get on. Um, the Mass Appeal guys who were started as the Ego Trip guys, Sasha Jenkins, Elliot Wilson, Brent Rollins, God, uh, Gabe Acevedo. It was obvious there was something special about those human beings. Um, but the other side is also true. You can see failure in people that think they're gonna be successful because they just Ooh. don't got it. They just don't got it. And the reason they don't got it is because they talk it and they don't know how to walk it. Um, and there are a lot of people that claim they got it and they don't got it, right? When I first met Hovain, may he rest in peace, I was doing a deal with Troy Ave for Nouveau. 
And I remember leaving the meeting and my partner was like, yo, what do you think of Troy? And I said, yo, Troy's a monster, but his manager is the one. You said, but his manager what? But his manager is the one. Hovain was the one. And Hovain went on to manage, I mean, everyone from Styles P to Smoke Dizza to run. I mean, it was, I mean, Hovain was the guy. Troy Ave is special and is still special, but Hovain was the guy. You could just tell that this guy was built for greatness. It, it's unfortunate he was taken from us too early, but he was built for it. You could just tell. Um, and again, I've been really fortunate to be around a lot of very, very sex, successful entrepreneurs and they all have that DNA. This one thing in their commonality is that they make something that's complex, really simple and digestible. That's so dope. I never heard it put that way, um, Search, but you're so damn right. You, you really are. Um, that is such a real, real statement. Uh, you, you spoke about Nouveau, another venture you, that you really helped to put that brand on the map. What was your role over at Nouveau? So my role at Nouveau is basically um, all, every single video song integration brand deal we ever did, I did. That was my role, every single deal. Um, so I, I, I really enjoy telling this story because it's one of my favorites. Um, so when I first met um, Raphael Jacoby, who was the owner, he came to me through, through a mutual friend of ours, uh, John Vasquez, who used to run uh, yep. Puff's restaurant. Shout out to um, Chef. Yep, yep. Um, John came to see me in Detroit because they were looking for a radio ambassador in Detroit. And I said, yeah, but I'm way bigger than a radio ambassador. Like, you know, this is what I can do. This is what I bring to the table. This is, you know, how I, you know, how I can operate and how I can make things, you know, work. And uh, I told Raphael I needed a contract. He said, I don't do contracts. I said, oh, sorry, I don't work without a contract. Sorry, I don't do anything without a contract. Uh, still to this day, I, I don't, I don't do a single deal without a contract. I don't care if it's an email. I need something in paper that just details what the deal is. Period. I don't trust nobody. I don't take anybody's word for face. I don't care how much, how many deals you did with Blase Splee and had no problems. I don't do anything without a contract. So, Raphael gives me this contract, very short tail means, you know, short tail contract means it's like six months or less. He's like, look, I'm gonna give you a contract. This is what I'm gonna offer you. Um, and this is what you gotta do. I was like, all right, no problem. I can do that. And what it was, was he wanted me to go and create a video and song integration for their brand with the biggest artist in the world. Biggest artist in the world in 2007 was T-Pain. Period. T-Pain was the biggest artist in the world, 2007, 2008. There was no one bigger. And I knew his managers. And I went to them and I said, hey, I got an idea for a deal. I got this new brand coming out. It's called Nouveau. Um, and I remember going to see a guy who had worked with Raphael before, another mutual friend of ours named Nick Storm. And I said to Nick, I said, hey, tell me about Raphael. What are some things I should know? What shouldn't I know? And the first thing Nick said was, yo, you should stay away from that Nouveau shit. Ain't nobody drinking that shit. You know, uh, he said, Raphael thinks men are going to drink pink shit. He's fucking out of his mind. I said, okay, but separate from that, that's a personal opinion. What should I know about the guy? And he kind of gives me the lay of the land. That's cool. Sign a contract. And I go after T-Pain. It's the first thing I do. And uh, Mike Blumstein, his manager, and this guy, Dave, we're going back and forth, back and forth. We finally settle on a deal. And he says, look, he's in the studio right now working on a song, it'd be perfect. Let's close this deal. I said, okay. And three months later, I bring Nouveau, blame it on the alcohol. I'ma take a shot of the Nouveau, shorty then you know it's going down. People don't realize that was a built-in natural integration because what I did was I said, look, I don't need him to say anything except something natural. 
It's got to be totally natural involved in the song. And like, yo, it's a song about alcohol and Jamie Foxx is doing it. Great. So we paid for the entire video, paid for him. And we went from 600 cases a month to 60,000 in 18 months. So that first and foremost, you were the one who put that deal together, which obviously landed a, a, a record that went on to get a Grammy, if I can remember correctly. An American not- Music Award. In fact, during the PET Awards, which is one of my personal, I have it saved. One of my favorite scenes ever is Payne runs on stage with a bottle of Nouveau. And they're showing the whole audience singing the song and they zoom in on Puff and he's mouthing, blame it on Ciroc, 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 Ciroc. <laughs> and the next Boy, you day, gotta... and the next day um, so three things happened right after the BET Awards. A, I moved to Florida. B, my partner was at Diageo and he was there. How the fuck? Is Nouveau everywhere? Why the fuck is Ciroc not every? Who the fuck is doing all these marketing promotions? Who the f- why don't I? You know, pu- you know, Puff being Puff, screaming on everybody. Um, not knowing that it's little old me behind the scenes making all these moves. And uh, he finds out it's me. I don't know how, but Egypt was working for him at the time. Right? And another person. I'm in my house, unpacking my house. I just moved to Florida. And she calls me. She goes, hey, search. I said, well, oh, shit, Egypt, what up? Oh, shit. What up? Hey, um, so we hear you doing this Nouveau stuff. I said, yeah, yeah. Why don't you come work for Ciroc? I said, hmm. I said, well, let me ask you a question. I own Nouveau. Do I get to own Ciroc? And she goes, what do you mean own it? I said, yeah, I, I own a percentage. So... Is Puff going to give me a piece of Ciroc? No, there's nothing to talk about. Thanks for calling. I'm unpacking my house. Love to the family. Click. That was it. <laughs> and uh, and we sold, two years later, we sold to Diageo for $469 million. Three years. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.